Ah, I got a tea bag in my mouth. It's Monday, February 15th, and you're listening to the TNIAB Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the world, in the world, in the world, in the world. Uh, today is Family Day. It is. That's T- true. Today's Family Day, so we hope you're spending your wonderful family, well, at least in Canada it is. Or Ontario. Specifically, Ontario. Specifically Canada. Ontario. <laughs> For a small little segment of, of the world, it's Family Day. It was also Valentine's Day over yes, the weekend. Yesterday was fa- was Valentine's Day. Or Sad Day. Sad uh, Day? Singles Appreciation Day. Why? I don't know. Apparently, singles are trying to take over Valentine's Day as Sad Day. That's dumb. To be se- Singles That's Appreciation dumb. Day. That's dumb. Why? Because they ty- they're, don't want to be single on Valentine's That's Day. That's fucking sad, man. Valentine's Day is for couples. Valentine's Day is for... You know what? I'll even broaden that. Valentine's Day is for showing your love. Yeah, Valentine's and you wanna, Day is... Yeah. Uh, you want to show your, your your parents that you love them, Happy Valentine's Day? Sure, why not? Your your siblings, your... Cousins? Your friends. Just whatever. It's National Baby Making Night. But, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> was, sure. Fine. Wasn't it? I guess. That's what I, it's for. I'm sure a lot of... Yeah, it's just like chocolate and banging, I guess. That's, a, that's what Valentine's Day is. Like, breaking it down, it's... Yo, this is the day we all have sex. <laughs> I saw this poll on GameFAQs. Okay. And it was about, uh, I think it went up either the Saturday. It must have been the Saturday. And it said, are are you single or something like that? Okay. Are you in a relationship? <laughs> yeah. And the two bottom ones were the ones that I liked the most. Because the bottom one was, yes, and I would like to be with someone. I'm like, that's like, that's like the truest answer for like this entire scene. Yeah. The second the bottom one is, yes, I'm single, but I don't need anybody. I'm like, you're all <laughs> fucking lying. <laughs> All people who vote D are back up to C. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, that's a lie. No, 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 okay. no. That's pretty good. Uh, and then the other ones were like, yes, yes, yes. And, but not serious. And the, the middle one was like, yes, but we're not serious. And I'm like, that's the one you all want. <laughs> God damn it. Is this poll still up? Uh, it, It's not still going. Oh, okay. It was yesterday's poll. Oh, yeah. Because this one's about, to, I think today's poll is, uh, have you been in a relationship with someone you met online? Oh. Right. And that one's kind of like a... I don't think that one's... That one's tougher to answer, especially with services now, like Tinder and like... Yeah. Like, technically, most people meet people online now. I wonder if they mean, like, strictly online. Like, I'm, I'm, my girlfriend lives within World of Warcraft. I think that's what the question is trying to get at, but... With the today's current whatever. Well, let's view these results, man. Live poll. Okay, okay. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Have you ever been involved in a romantic relationship with someone you first met online? 11.69% say yes, we're still together. Well, that's good. 16.9% say yes for a while, but it didn't work out. Of course. 5.92% say yes, and it was a complete disaster. Really? A disaster, huh? 37.93 say no, but I'm open to dating someone I met online. Yeah. And 27.56 say no, and I can't imagine ever doing that. They're missing one. What? Uh, yes, then I went to go meet them, and I... And then, then I ran away. Then I ran away. <laughs> oh, that's that's the one they're missing. They got catfished? That's mean. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? It happens. Anyways, happy Valentine's Day, happy Family Day, all love going out to everyone out there uh, in your in your earphones, mm-hmm. headphones, whatever. Uh, this week, though, we had a, we got some special plan for you guys. Mm. We are doing the full-on Metal Gear Solid Five yeah. spoiler cast. I'm ready. Uh, that's gonna be at the the back half of this show because before before that we gotta get through our, our picks, we gotta get through our weeks and and all that fun stuff. So get hyped no, for that. You just put it in the middle. Like, oh shit! It'll be like and next in my <laughs> week, all the spoilers in Metal Gear Solid Five. <laughs> yes, but before we get to all that fun stuff. I'm going to kick off the show here with Vince's cycling story time. Yay! So before Wait, I... Well, yes. For people who don't know where we live, <laughs> it is currently, on average, 
negative 27. Like, it's degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius. No, Fahrenheit. Negative 27 <laughs> Fahrenheit. But yeah, so here, Nan, he'll tell you his story. Okay, 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 okay. Well, to be fair, on the days I went out, it was more like zero. Okay, fine. Okay, I didn't go out on negative 30, because I'm not that dumb. But that wind chill, though. That wind chill made it feel a bit colder, but it's okay, I bundled up. I, I dress warm. Anyways, uh, before I went, to, I started cycling, I was really into running. Hmm. And I would always run, usually the same, like, whether it's cycling or running, I generally do it the, at the same time every day, and I always plan my day around it. And that's usually around, like, just before sunset. Okay. Um, so when I was running, when I used to be running every day around six thirty, I would three quarters into my run, like on the return home trip, I would, um, get to this intersection and I would, uh, I would make a left. No, I would make a right. I was, was I'm on Stone Church and, and Garth. Okay. Okay. I take the right to go down Garth. Mm -hmm. Every time I make that turn, there's a girl coming in the opposite direction and she's also running. like at the same time every day like what? maybe maybe sometimes we'll meet each other later maybe sometimes we'll meet each other earlier like we'll cross paths earlier but every single day like this is how, this is how it used to be do you guys do the stride high five like do you I, I wish off, like? I, I wish i wish i wish i did do that but <laughs> most of the time we would just smile and nod our heads each other whatever and um ever since i started biking obviously i haven't seen her anymore because yeah. she's she runs so i was biking out on monday because I was like, yo, it's a nice day on Monday. And uh, spiking, I was biking, I was biking. And I was going down a paradise here. I was going towards the stairs. Yeah. And so I, and then it's so dumb. But you know how in anime they're like, what's this pressure? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> no way. But I was like, is someone behind me? And I, I didn't want to look because I didn't want to be like, well, what if someone's there? Then what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> what's this menacing pressure behind me like your villain your arch nemesis so i so i so i hit pause on the justin bieber god damn it and i could hear the wheel of another bike and i'm like okay someone is there and i turn around and it's her what yeah and why is she biking and i'm like you have a bike and she's like yeah i just got into it and i'm like <laughs> no way <laughs> that's so creepy and she has a sick bike too like it's way nicer than mine She's just full of gear and everything. And she's like, yeah, actually, I'm, she, and then we got to talking. She's like, yeah, I'm part of a cycling club. And like, you should come and join. And I'm like, oh, cool. But then it got really cold and I never got to go. <laughs> so. What? Yeah. You goddamn nerd. I know. But Be behind your <laughs> faux hawk exterior is a complete dork. You, that was an inn, homie. I know. No, so I was like, yeah, I'll totally join. But then like the weather turned to shit around here. Yeah. And then. I haven't been outside. No one's been outside. <laughs> no one, no one's been outside. <laughs> That's an in. Oh. No, 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 no. So she'll message me when to go out next time. Oh, my God. oh so, message you. So I, I don't know what, what uh, who she's, her club is with, but I've been looking for a cycling club. Mm -hmm. So I hope they're good. What if, they, what, if, what if they're bad, but you're the shonen hero who whips them all into shape and gets them in the I'm, Viking spirit? I'm not that type of guy. I would just, I would just drop them. <laughs> You'd be Midosuji. You're like all these zakus. I can't. I feel handle. like fuck sitting on the back of this shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But there you go. Oh, you could have had the the story where like your team tries their hardest, but even though you trained them and you did as best as they could, you only came in second. And it's like it's not about the it's not about the like first place. It's about the journey of teamwork and friendship. Who are you talking to? <laughs> I want to win. I want to go fast. I want to be the first to cross the finish I line. Thought you were gonna turn a new leaf, you know? New no, year. <laughs> new year, new me. I thought you were part no. of that whole deal. Who who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> okay, I crush others. All right, fine. Jeez, but yeah. So yeah. Get into cycling, everybody. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you meet <laughs> random people first. First, your prerequisite is that you have to be into running. Ah, uh, yes. And then after you run for a couple of years, then get into biking, and then crazy yeah. shit will happen. Yeah, yeah. No. But I asked her, I'm like, How? so you got into bike? She's like, yeah, my, my parents got me a bike because I wanted one. Oh. I was like, shit, your bike looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want that bike. I'll trade you. Like, I was like, if it wasn't a woman's bike, I would steal it, but whatever. Whatever, just take it anyways. No, it doesn't fit my ergonomics. Oh, okay. Fine. 
You need you need the seat with the hole in it so your junk doesn't. No, get I just mean like it's the women's bikes are designed to take advantage of the fact that they have lower center of gravity. Oh. Uh... And the fact that they usually have uh, shorter legs. Oh, okay. Right. So damn, uh, I wouldn't. I did not know that. Yeah. Is that like, is there a difference between women's and men's ice skates? I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming the... so. Okay. Other than you mean other than styling? No, because I always see the ones where it's like they have like the spikes in the front and the blade on the back is flat. Yeah. Are those like figure skating skates? Yes. Those oh, are figure skating okay. skates. Right. Oh, you're thinking of the height, the hockey skates. Yeah. Which is the blade. Yeah. It's just a curved blade. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, figure skating ones are different. Okay. Right. Yeah, so you have more. They're longer, so you have more stability. Oh. Like when you're doing like your fancy curves. Oh, I and guess stuff. that's why the speed skating is so long. Yeah. The longer okay. anything is generally more stable you are. Longboard. But you don't have as much uh, nimbleness. All right. Which you would need in hockey to like quickly yeah, turn yeah, around yeah. and stuff. Okay. But, yeah. Right. There, there's your sports segment, guys. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> um, sports in you. Time for the picks of the week. And I've been talking a lot, so you get to go first, Anthony. Okay. So I only got one pick of the week. It's Again, okay. slow news cycle. It's okay. We, we got something bigger to talk about. We later. do. We do. Uh, yo, man. Remember that game? Remember that game, Destiny? I love Destiny! <laughs> well, Destiny's fine. Destiny's, Destiny's the greatest! Destiny's... Oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, Destiny is coming out with a quote-unquote significant inspa- expansion this year. Slated for spring. Yeah. Uh, Wait, spring? Yeah. Slated, oh. Yeah, slated for spring. Fuck. Yeah. The content release apparently will feature uh, a quote-unquote significant light increase. Uh, new gear uh, and new challenges for PvE players. So I guess they're because like PvP really has a lot of focus this expansion. Uh, so I guess they're trying to bring out more replayability <clears throat> for PvE stuff this spring. Yeah, and then beyond that, they are trying to make a full-fledged Destiny sequel for 2017. Hmm. And right now, people are just calling it Destiny Two because well, what else would you call it? Well, what else would you call it? Destiny Three. But Destiny One, maybe. What is O N E? Yeah. Oh, oh, fucked up with that be. Des- well, I'm just be Destiny Zero. <sighs> Destiny Zero Dawn. Oh my god. <laughs> god, they're putting in robot dinosaurs into <laughs> Destiny. Now I gotta play it. Yeah. Fuck. No. So, I'm more interested in hearing your thoughts on a possible Destiny expansion because I'm done. Like I'm done with Destiny. Like Destiny has to do something super extreme and severe to get me back in in any way shape or form <clears throat> so yeah i haven't been too hot on destiny lately and uh i i even think there's an event there's two events so far that i've missed since the start of this year okay. right? iron banner and uh right now they have the, their valentine's event okay with uh crimson doubles mm-hmm. um so yeah i haven't really been into destiny since sparrow racing league uh this news is interesting because at the end of last year, they said they would do no more expansions, and they would just stick to the small little events like yeah, what they have now. And so this, so this is very surprising to hear that they have another expansion. Especially something that sounds <clears throat> so significant. Yeah. But at the same time, last year when they said that, it was also rumored that they would have a sequel out this, this year. year. Oh, okay. So now that they say their sequel is planned for next year, this expansion makes total sense. They're mm. going to need something big to tie this over for a year. Um... Or at least half a year. I'll tell you what. This <clears throat> this new expansion, as intriguing as it sounds, and actually my interest in it depends a lot on external factors. It depends oh, okay. on how much and how far I'm into the division. Ooh. Because that, that game looks hot. That game looks good. That game looks... Open betas next weekend. I mean, that game, that game gave me the feelings of... My original feelings for I, Destiny. I am planning on getting all my homework done this week real early, so, so I can just it? play the division. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I have. It sucks. I have to re up my PlayStation Plus. I don't know if I want to pay fifty bucks for this beta. You gotta do what you gotta do, homie. I know, right? Sacrifices must be made. Or I can just bring over my PlayStation. But I want to be my own character. Don't you want to go to the dark zone with me? Not really, because <laughs> you'll shoot me. You'll go rogue and steal my shit. So. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> doesn't count. None of this transfers over. What if it does? Fuck, I'll be so loaded. All right. But yeah, no, so uh, I'll definitely check it out because actually, will I? I'll have to pay for it. It's an expansion. What if? Yeah, but also the, the external factor to your external factor 
What if all your friends get it? What if TJ, Mikey, and me are just playing, having a good time? Oh, in killing Destiny? It. No, in, in The Division. Oh, then I probably won't go back to Destiny. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Like, if, if, we have a, if we have a crew ready to roll out every day into The Division, I probably won't play any other game for a while. Okay. Um, That's fair. But, yeah, I'm interested to see what, what this expansion can bring. Mm. Because The Taken King was all about fixing Destiny. Yeah. So this new expansion is really going to be an expansion. To see, like, what they actually add to it. Yes. Yeah. So that I think that's the most interesting thing. But other than that, uh, yeah, I'm all about the division right now. Oh wait, man! Oh, I just remembered in other news, another MMO expansion, <clears throat> Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh right, is getting a, a new patch, and man, all that all the stuff in this patch looks super sick, and it's all end game stuff. Yeah, it looks really cool. I noticed, and. I am so glad I canceled my <laughs> subscription. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Because I am nowhere near any of that stuff. Really? And yeah, like I bought Heaven's Ward like on discount on Boxing Day. So I'm not too bummed about that purchase. But ever like ever since our our Canadian dollar has been garbage, mm. uh, I've realized that Square Enix is charging me in USDs. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, so this fifteen dollar this fourteen ninety nine monthly fee is actually like Twenty three dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna cancel this. I can't just let it roll and roll in whenever I want now. Yeah, it's an extra twenty five bucks you're throwing away. Yeah, man. Oh, it's terrible. Think about the games you can get in two months. Exactly. And uh, yeah, it's just that game's really good. It's just I'm not. I don't know why I'm not playing it. It's weird. That is very weird. That's weird. It's weird. I think TJ said he just canceled his too. Oh wow! So and he has a full time job. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's, he's an just, adult. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's just... I think that's the problem. He has no time now. I think... I feel like I've played that game vicariously through one of my friends. Because they just play it religiously, like, every day. Yeah. So, they tell me all about it, and I'm like, oh, okay, I know what's up. I don't need to experience this. Yeah, I remember buying my PlayStation 3 for that in Bloodborne. I remember playing it, because people told me, like, listen, it's... Even if you don't like MMOs, like, this is, like, a very great single player focused it is mmo i didn't get that from it it is you're just wrong i didn't get that from it, it. is though the story just didn't pull me in i was okay. just like whatevs whatevs okay fine. this is a thing and it happens um but yeah what about your picks vince my picks uh well my picks are all toy related oh, what no way because this week is toy fair in new york city wait didn't that happen last week that was wonderfest oh, in okay. japan so right. toy fair is the big one with like hasbro mattel okay Transformers. Yeah, the gi- the giants of the toy, all right, all of right. the mainstream toy industry come out and they show their shit. <laughs> okay, jeez, wow, okay, whoa. They showed some stuff, man. What'd they show? Uh, they showed a lot of stuff, but I'll show you the only things that really excited me. Okay, oh, you got visuals. I got visuals here. Uh, so you remember that Batmobile I bought? Yeah. Uh, turns out they're doing a new one. They came with a better version that turns. No, they came with a better, better version that's uh, got like metallic grills. <laughs> It's got uh, Batman and Robin with cloth capes. That sucks, man. And it's got the bat signal. That's no early adopters. <laughs> get fucked. This Jesus. Yeah, I don't like yo. Fuck this shit. So I'm gonna get rid of that Batmobile. Why don't you just have two Batmobiles? Why the fuck? Well, why have two Batmobiles when I can have a Batmobile and their newly announced product, the Batwing? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So they announced the Batwing. Is that guy wearing a Batman onesie? Yeah, he's the toy designer at DC. Ew. All right, but the Batwing's cool. Yeah, that that thing that thing looks like it would cut someone. Doesn't it look like it's a giant uh, batarang? Yeah, yeah, looks hot. He looks cool. Is it like the same? But don't buy it because this is the, your car all over again. They're I gonna know come out with a I Batman know. that has cloth capes and shit. I know, but well, I look at this and I'm like, that's really cool. But this isn't the thing that really excited me. All right. All right. Um, the thing that really excited me is uh, my favorite superhero. My favorite is actually a, a version of Batman from the future. Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. So they finally, years later, have announced this three pack with Terry McGinnis, Cranky Batman, and Ace the Dog. <laughs> Those look pretty cool. They look like their cartoon counterparts. Yes. Uh, and once I saw this, I'm like, I don't need to collect any other Batman shit anymore. I just want this three pack set. And I'm done. If they make Terry's Batmobile, that will be sick. Have you seen Terry's Batmobile? No. It's 
It's a com- so Batman Beyond's Batmobile is a combined version of the Batmobile and the Batwing. Oh, sick! And it it, it flies faster than Superman. What? Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> yes. Does it fly faster than uh, what's her face's invisible jet? Of course. Oh, okay. That thing just glides. But uh, yeah, there's other great stuff like um, Transformers are doing Headmasters this year. Looks uh, cool. You know what Headmasters are? Uh, I've heard of them. I think you've told me about them before. I just okay. So know. there's all these sort of masters like Target Masters, Power Masters, Headmasters. Okay, Moto Master. He's a character. I learned that he's from a, he's Destruction. A, he's a character. Okay. He's not really a, a master. But he's this is master. Sure. <laughs> sure. 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 Um. So Transformers are vehicles that turn into robots. Yeah. But think about what if the ve- the robot didn't have a head? What? That's not... What? Okay. Think of it like this. Think of... Say there's like a... Oh, here... Okay, there's a guy called Hardhead. Mm-hmm. Okay? He's a... He's basically like a, an H-tank. Okay? He has a cockpit, and the robot sits in that cockpit to pilot the tank. Yeah. When he transforms, the tank becomes a body, and the pilot turns... He transforms into the head, and he locks on the top. Oh, weird. Wait, like a Mazinger? Sort of. Like, there's just a dude in his head? No. The head is the robot. Oh. Like, think of a little robot the size of you and me. Okay. That transforms into a head that locks onto a bigger oh, shell. Oh, okay. So it's like a robot and then his giant transforming shell. That's cool. I've always liked the concept of headmasters and all these sort of... Ma- and, like, power masters are... The guy is an engine. And he locks on and he becomes the beating heart of the... That's sick. Like, it's a cool idea, and, and they're doing okay. that this year. That reminds me of Gurren Login transformations, where it's like, in Super Galaxy yeah. is Ark, and then in Ark is whatever. Yes, yeah, so yeah. sort of like that. Just, there's no human pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they're doing that this year, and I'm so pumped. That sounds cool. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why. I like I like robots who pilot bigger robots. <laughs> That's, it's... <laughs> I heard you like robots. That's like Exhibit made a robot. I heard you like robots. So we put a robot in your Here's robot. two robots. So he could robot while he robots. Yeah. But yeah. So that's cool. Um, and I think that's it for my picks. Nice. Let's move on to our weeks. All right. You want to uh, go first? Or... I, well, this week I only have one thing to talk about. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I'll go first. Yeah. So I finished Mortal Kombat Devastation. Mortal Kombat Devastation? I'm sorry, Mortal Kombat Devastation. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, what is Trans- this game? <laughs> Transformers Devastation. Oh, Man, we can spoil this one, one, too. That's the one. Oh, we can, yeah. Uh-huh. All right, full-on spoilers. Okay. Quarant- or- Actually, should I can talk about the thing? All right, okay. Not yet. Okay. I'm going to talk about Wolfenstein The New Order first. So, because I finished Transformers Devastation, yes. I started playing Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein The New Order. Yes. Uh, So, what I've said last week still holds, like, Hyper violent story, super good, but it just it just keeps getting better. Really? Yeah, that game does not slow down in terms of quality and in terms of story pacing. Uh, they go really in depth in like how the Nazis have taken over, like because mm. the story is an alternate history. Okay. So in the nineteen forties, <clears throat> you're fighting the Nazis, and then you as B.J. Blazkowicz. You pretty you get hit in the face with a bunch of shrapnel, yeah, and uh, it causes brain damage, and you're pretty much in like a, like a, not a coma, but you're in a state to where you're conscious of everything that's going on around you, mm-hmm. but you can't move, <clears throat> right? Your brain's still active, but you're pretty much a vegetable. Okay, and you get put brought into this like mental facility, uh, for like crazy people, and eventually like almost twenty years have passed, like sixteen to eighteen years have passed. Of you just sitting down as a vegetable. Yeah. And uh, eventually your brain just kicks in because your hatred for the Nazis pretty much <laughs> kicks in. There's like there's like a scene where the Nazis are doing something bad in front of your in front of your eyes. Yeah. And then your hatred for the Nazis like kicks you out of your coma. Yeah. And then you kill some Nazis. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and you're in alternate history 1960. Uh, the Nazis have taken over. They've pretty much sweeped all of Europe and they're just an unstoppable force. And they really go deep into their alternate history where, like, uh, so, like, the bands like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles still exist. Mm-hmm. But they're, like, f- German versions. Oh. So they've taken these people, like, 
they're still that band, but the Germans have forced them to sing those songs, but in like German f- instruments and German influences and German, uh, wow, in German and in German lyrics. So like they have a sample of "It's House of the Rising Sun," uh, by the Rolling Stones, and in this one, it's like a polka Russian version, and it's all in Russian. It's or it's all in German. Sorry. Sounds awesome. It's weird. It's like. It's believable to where it's like, oh man, no, if the Nazis totally won, like, if Hitler actually did this, <laughs> this might be the future. Like, he might have just enslaved all these people, like, all of England and all this stuff. Uh, the Nazis have taken so much control that they have, like, pretty much, like, super mega structures. Uh, <clears throat> they've they've made this, like, super concrete that's, like, almost indestructible. They made Chagokin. Yeah, and they've... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and they've made... Uh, really far advancements with cyborg technology okay but like not in the nice way you think of cyborg technology like really kind of fucked up like this guy is more machine than man and he's just, it's just like a robot with a flesh outer skeleton it's kind of fucked yeah uh and it's just it really drags you into that world and it really makes it believable uh on top of that the the gameplay is just the qual the the shooting's pretty good uh, it's nothing super outstanding, okay. but the weapon variants are really fun to use, and you can dual wield every single weapon. How do I feel about that? So, man, automatic shotgun is totally a weapon in that game. Oh man, are we, you wanna, are we back to the days of uh, Modern Warfare Two? Yeah, you want to dual wield automatic shotguns? You just roll and go, 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 go. They got twenty shells in each clip. Uh, the other thing is you can choose to how you approach each level. Each level can be taken out either guns blazing, blow off everybody's limbs and hyper violence, or you can do stealth route. And you are rewarded with different perks and upgraded abilities based on how you most like to play. So you're playing? I'm playing mostly stealth. Okay. So I'm going around slightly taking out Nazis. I got a, I got a silencer for one of my pistols and, uh, I just got an upgrade where headshots do more damage. So, or stealth headshots do. And that, that plays into stuff like, because certain enemies have helmets and stuff, so now if I shoot them in the helmet, it just kills them. Like, it doesn't go, ow, my helmet, and then, then you gotta shoot them, right? Oh, okay. It's just it's just really fun. Uh, I did not expect this game to be as good as it is, and it's probably, out of everything I picked up this Boxing Day, like, this is my favorite. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it's a 2014 game, I believe, two years ago? Yeah, I remember it got a lot of hype. Yeah, it's it's really good. That game is a lot better than it has any right to be. I can't I, I really I haven't even finished it, but I just really want to play the old blood. Wow. I rec- highly recommend it. You could probably pick it up cheap now. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh and so okay, now full on spoiler cast of Transformers Devastation. Okay. Everybody got it? Alright, good. <laughs> because they're so worried about being spoiled on Transformers I know. Devastation. Man, oh that game is the dumbest <laughs> and the best thing at the same time. There was a moment where I was running across a bridge in yeah. the sun in the sunset, uh-huh. but I, I was running across it as Grimlock. Oh. It was the dumbest thing. It was so cool. Oh, that's where Blitzwing fights you as yeah, a tank. As a... a tank, and like it's like the side scrolling yeah. shooter. But yeah. you're, out, I was just rolling around as Grimlock. Is oh, this game is so dumb. Mega or Mega Man, uh, Megatron has the best line i know he's megatron yeah like and there's just straight up scenes where he's like oh there's like an explosion over there and all the autobots <laughs> look at the explosion and then megatron's like dumbasses and just flies <laughs> away like <laughs> i love the i love the transitions between uh when it's telling story between autobots and decepticons where it does oh, like the the da, symbol da, da, switch da, da, da. Yeah, it does the nah. symbol switch yeah. and then it switches over to them uh What's Moto Master? Okay, who? What's his? Uh, what's his final form? Menis- when, Menasaur. Yeah, Menasaur. That boss fight was my favorite boss fight. The, in the whole Thundercons. Game. Yeah, they, they're so sick. He just forms like Voltron, and then he gets a sick Thunder Sword. Yeah, yeah, it gets pretty anime. He get it gets real anime, especially <laughs> at the end. <laughs> yeah, when you face both combiners at the same time. Yeah, I was like, fuck. And <laughs> then fight Megatron in. Sp- Space. I like how Optimus gets space. Well, he jumps on all the Insecticons, <laughs> yeah. and then Megatron just flies. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty dumb how Megatron could just fly. Huh? Yeah, he has no jets. <laughs> he has no, like I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, 
Man, that's so sick. That game's so awesome. For what it is. Oh, it's so dumb. It's the oh, it's so good. Uh I really like the crafting portion. Really? Yeah, it's very limited, but uh it gives me like the sense of progress and like if uh so what happened was when I, I told you I started on Commander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Commander is totally meant for you to have it's not based on your skill. It's based on skill your plus weapons. quality yeah. of weapons. Yeah. Right? And uh so I switched back to regular. But because I had beaten chapter one in Commander already, I had commander level weapons. So when I was going through the normal mode, I was just like one shotting people. Oh wow. Right in like the early half nice. of that game. So it's like one, two, three, four, double S rank, sick. Yeah. Uh yeah, and that game's just straight up like even to the ending in space, like that game is just straight up a platinum games through and through uh I, I, it's so good yeah i wish there was more it makes me wish for another full-fledged platinum game yeah like think, in the vein I, of a band i think that's what i i wish this game was like i wish it wasn't just this little one-off thing yeah i wish it was like a real game and they fully went into it but yeah it's it's it's, it's cool as a fan of transformers like there's a lot of cool stuff that they do i bet they're like yeah. it seemed like there was a lot of stuff i didn't get especially at the after credits teaser uh, like there's some like giant silver robot that goes online and I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a uh, Metroplex. Oh shit. So he's just a city. Cool. Um, but yeah, like, uh, there's like, there's a lot of combiners I, and I was surprised they went Menasaur and the fact that uh, the Autobots didn't have one, but, uh, yeah, because my favorite combiner has always been Bruticus. He's basically, so they're all themed, right? Like Devastator's construction vehicles, yeah. Menasaur sports cars. Yeah. Uh, Bruticus is just all army vehicles. Whoa, sick! So like, yeah, he just has a chopper on his shoulder. Is he? Uh, is he a good guy or a bad guy? He's a bad guy. Oh, okay. He's a bad guy. The Autobot combiners suck. Oh, because they're like one's called. What the fuck's the name? I forget. Uh, what do the aerial bots be turn into? I forget. But there's one where they're all jets. Okay. But um, their leader's afraid of heights. <laughs> What? He's a jet though. Uh huh. And he and he captains the the aerial bots. That's dumb. Yeah. Right. Uh, the other the other the one that all like Autobot fans love is called Computron. Okay. It's just as dumb as you think it is. It's just a computer. No, I mean like the, his team is like all futuristic um, vehicles, but they're just dumb. Who was so when in the final chapter of that game? Yeah. There was a robot that I fought who. Turned into a gun. Oh, shockwave! Shockwave. Yeah, he looks weird. He looks like Future Tech version. Because yeah. like everyone else is like mad eighties, yeah. like really blocky and stuff. Yeah. And then he's just like, hey, check out my Future Tech. Like my vi my eyes are just I'm a cyclops, and I turn into a sick laser gun. Yeah. Is he like? Is he a big deal in that universe? Or yeah. So. So you know how we used to always joke around like, uh, if we were Decepticons, who would be who? Yeah. Uh, Shockwave's one of the the generals. Oh, okay. so Megatron's at the top. Yeah. Uh, his second is Starscream. Yeah. And his other second is Soundwave. Okay. And then his final second is Shockwave. Shockwave. But Shockwave only lives on planet Cybertron. Oh, okay. That's why you never see it. Like that's why he hasn't adopted like an Earth mode or anything. He's just mm. a space gun. He's just a space gun. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> you know, one of his moves, he just turns into a gun and then flips a bunch, shooting a laser. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. It's just like, oh, this is fucked up. And man, seeing those credits, like, it was just like one American dude yeah. who gave the Japanese team, like, here's everything you need to know about Transformers. <laughs> yeah. And then they just Japaned it up. Yeah. Like, it's really cool. I really like that game. That game's really yeah, good. It's really cool. How did you feel about Megatron becoming a tank? It... I'd have no affinity towards, oh, okay. like, 80s Transformers, so, like, whatever. Uh, but I think that made more a more interesting. For sure. Game Megatron's a beast in yeah, that game. He made it, made it more interesting gameplay wise than him yeah. just turning into a gun. Yeah. Right. Do you have to fight him as Optimus? In space, you do, but there are trophies tied to beating the game as other people. Okay. So I don't know if that means go through the game, like all the chapters, as only as a single one. Okay. And then beat it as Optimus at the end, so I I'm not sure. Yeah, because most of the game I played as Wheeljack, but then in the final chapter, like, after you beat the two combiners, yeah. I switched to Optimus, and I'm like, we're at the end of the game. I gotta make this thematic. So I played as What's-His-Face, uh, the guy, the Lamborghini. Oh, Sideswipe? Sideswipe. So I mostly played as Sideswipe. And I went into the final mission playing as Sideswipe. And when you face Optimus, or when you face, sorry, Megatron, 
in space at the end of the game, it switches you to Optimus, but you have whatever weapons you were using on. Oh. Uh, because Optimus can use every weapon. Yeah. So it just changes the loadout to whatever you had on your previous dude. Oh, okay. Right? But you still, I think you have to face Megatron as Optimus. Oh, okay. Yeah. That game's, that game's really good. It's a fun game. <laughs> oh, my God. Menasaur. He's cool. He's so sick. He had all the thunder moves. Like, he looked just, he kind of just looked like a ripoff of Ultron. Sort of. Like, because all of his sports cars were the different colors on all of his limbs, and then yeah. he just shoots his sword in the air, and lightning hits <clears> it, I'm like, this is just Voltron, like, why, yeah. what's happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. I can see that. Cool. Really, yeah. That game's also really good. Buy that game. <laughs> yeah. But well, other than school, like, I've just been mainly doing, just, I finished up that, and I've been playing Wolfenstein, and that's it. Oh, okay. Or, also been playing a little bit of Diablo. Right, you always play that. Always playing Diablo. Yeah. My numbers got higher. Yay? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, yay. Okay. It's a good yay. Just making sure. Um, let's see. Before we head right into the to the big topic, uh, this week I bought headphones. All right. And I was so excited because I thought they were going to come tomorrow. Yeah. But yo, family day. Oh, yeah. Postal service. So I just had to get my anger out. That sucks. <laughs> Fuck you, postal service. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Work on holidays. Through rain, sleet, or snow, yeah. but not on holidays? Come Jeez. on. Jeez. What kind of service is this? Anyways. Uh, yeah, so now we're at the point where we're going to... I beat Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah. I made sure I beat it. I beat it. And then we also watched the Phantom episode. Yeah, we watched the, the, the deleted cut... The, the deleted portion of the game, we'll say. Yeah, which came with... Uh, the special edition of Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, this is your last chance, guys. If you don't want to hear the big t- plot twist or our full thoughts on MGS Five, leave now. Turn it off. Beat the game, and in eighty hours, come back and listen to this. This might be like this is pretty much the end of the podcast. Yeah, like you're not going to miss anything at the end. Yeah, this, this is all Metal Gear. Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah. This is all Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Metal Gear spoiler starts now. Yo, you marathon this game. I did. Marathon. How did you not? Did you burn out on this game? Uh, towards the end, yeah, it was okay. tough. It was tough. Um, cause like I, I tried to do the all, trank stuff. Like I had quiet, given her the, trank the silent silencer. sniper. I had I made custom weapons so that I always had a, a silencer on my stuff. Yeah, yeah. But by the end of it, I'm like, fuck this, quiet. You're getting the anti-material rifle. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Just gonna go through it. Yeah, man. And I, I gave myself everything with a silencer, and I made sure, like, when it says eliminate this enemy, I'm like, fine, no and problem. Just eliminate. Yeah. And I would find the quickest solution and be like, Man. I'm just gonna, well, I'm gonna wait for you. Pop. If I missed, she hit it. And be like, we're out. Exfiltrate. That's the that's the cool thing about that game, is you don't get penalized for killing, really. Yeah. It gives you, it gives you your rank based on the method you use, but how well you use that method. Not It's like, oh, you killed him, so you get an A. Well, you do get penalized. But not enough to wear. I don't know. Like, I, cause I, on the missions that I did the perfect stealth, no kills, yeah. you get so much more money. Oh, true. Like, you get so, and money is, money's a, a important resource in this game. You run out game. of money fast near the end of you the game. You do, because, um, I, it got to the point where, like, I, my sneaking suit, I was like, I'm just gonna use the basic level, my grenades, the basic level, yeah. C4's basic, so that my, so that my loadout wouldn't be, like, 50k. Yeah, Going that out. game has an economy problem near the end. Yeah, I'm just like, ah, oh, I can't, I can't. And every time you call in the helicopter, that's like, what yeah. have you upgraded that to? I upgraded it to max, and I painted it all gold. Oh, mine, <laughs> mine was all silver because oh, okay. I want to be chrome. Okay, but yeah, so yeah, so like yeah, towards the end of the game, I was just like, fuck, I'm running out of money fast. Mm. Um, where do you want to start with this? Okay, where did you leave off last week? Uh, I had, I was at chapter twenty. Okay. It's ten chapters before the end of chapter one was done. Oh, sorry, ten missions before the end of chapter one. Okay, so you told us like you were telling you told us about like how you did you so, like the gameplay? Yeah, no, I think the gameplay is great. And uh, you but, said it was both the yeah you had my thing where it was best both the best and worst Metal Gear. Like, yeah, it's the best playing Metal Gear, but it's the worst at being Metal Gear. Yeah, and um, uh, I said that like it felt like I was watching a TV show mm-hmm. with a monster of the week. Yeah, but the monster was Cypher. Yeah, and it's like, where's Cypher this week? <laughs> Follow the money trail. Next time on Metal Gear. Kaz, Kaz is a total prick all again. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, that's where I left off. Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, let's start around there then. All right, all right. So uh, we, you find Skullfucker. I mean Skullface. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Skullface. Jeez, where did that come from? I was thinking of a toy with the name Skullfucker. What? There's a toy. <laughs> it's not spelled the way you think it's spelled. There's like an apostrophe. P H U C K E R. But you get you get the gist oh my anyway. God. Okay. Uh, you find you find Skullface and he's like, "Yo, so I, I'll show you I'll show you the cell of hand thrupess. Yeah, let me take you on this twenty minute car ride. And it was a twenty minute car ride. Holy shit! And he's just like, "You guys are sitting there awkwardly, and then sometimes he'll come into your face and give you some narration, and then after that, it's just like we're just gonna sit here." And I'm like, "Are we there yet?" What's happened? He talks the whole way. He drove he's across a chatty, Afghanistan. He's a chatty Kathy. <sighs> Anyways, you get there, and he's like, watch the magic, baby. And then uh, the third child comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, Eli is also somehow in there for some reason. Because uh, him and the third child are in cahoots. Sure. Anyways, uh, Eli assumes control of Salahanthropus. Yep. Psychically, not as a pilot. Yeah, yeah. Or the third child does, kind of, I think. I thought the third child gives Eli control. Oh. I thought that the third child took... No, like, that's why I thought it was after Snake. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Anyways, so you gotta fight a giant Metal Gear. Yeah. And, uh, that mission wasn't too bad. That mission was... You kind of got to go buck wild in that mission, and that was pretty fun. Yeah, and then... I really liked the slow-mo part, where it was, like, when it's near dead, and, like, it's gonna bite you, and then, like, the third child shows up, and you just pop the third child. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you, you shoot the third child, and then Salahantrop is like, oh, I'm stunned, and then you shoot him a bunch. Interesting. Why did you just not shoot him? I don't know. I had the multi-fire rockets. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned around and shot it, and then, like, it, it went kaboom. Oh, okay. And then, like, the battle was over. Oh, okay. But I didn't really... Sp- okay, sure. For that mission, I called in my helicopter. I didn't. And I had ro- I had a bunch of rockets on that helicopter, so... That my helicopter took down like half of it until it got shot down by the anti material so, rifle. That's the thing. That this mission gets expensive because yeah! they just auto call in support for you mm-hmm. and then they'll just drop weapons. And it's like I don't want it. And I'm and I'm looking at the thing going negative like forty five thousand, negative forty five I'm like, no oh, stop. <laughs> I don't need this. Like there's tanks on the field, I have my rockets, quiet shooting shit up. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't need any of this stuff. But uh yeah. They just drain your resources. It's expensive. Yeah. So that happens, and then Skullface just kind of, like... He just dies. I was like, whoa! This guy's just a little bitch. Yeah. So did you did you kill him, or did you let him go? Did you leave him with the gun? Because uh, at that moment, when he's uh, underneath all the rubble yeah. and the fire, you have a Metal Gear Solid 3 choice. Oh, uh, really? Of, like, I'm standing over you with this gun. I can either press the fire button and shoot you in the face or I can leave it. I can leave the gun in front of you. Oh, I shot him. Oh, okay. Didn't you not, did you not shoot him? No, I didn't shoot him. Okay, Because so, what happens okay. is uh, Huey just shows up and just fucking unloads in his face. Like, Huey shows up and takes the gun that you left. Okay, so he does that in mine. Oh, okay. But you didn't get to see what happens if you don't if you shoot him then. No, no. So you, you aim at his face but when you go to shoot him you shoot him in his gut and yeah. he bleeds out a bit. And then Kaz comes and he holds your your forearm, and you both aim at his leg, like his kneecap. Oh man! And you shoot it till his knee comes off. Then you you aim it at his his elbow joint, and you shoot that till his arm pops off. That's oh man! And then you put the you, and then you put the gun on the side of him where his his arm isn't attached, and then like kill yourself, <laughs> and you walk away. <laughs> That's so rough. Oh man! And then Huey comes in and he shoots him once. Oh okay, yeah. That's so, rough city, man. Yeah. Jesus. So it was it was fucked up. I was like, whoa, this is dark shit. <laughs> oh. Well, he did strap a bomb. Did, okay, the other thing. Did you get the pause sequences? The pause? Oh, like with the wandering soldiers in the pictures? Yeah. Yeah? I got yeah. six of them. Six of them? Oh, okay. All right. All right. There's a bunch. Okay. But those those sequences are weird. Did you see the end of those sequences? No, no. Uh, are you going to go back at no, all? Okay. No. <laughs> so what happens is uh, as you keep getting pictures, Pause starts remembering more and more things. And then she gets like, oh, no, my brain. I can't yeah, handle it yeah. or whatever. So uh, that was all in your head. Fuck, really? Yeah, yeah. That was. It's all in your head. 
Because so that area, if you actually go around behind that area in the medical bay, there, there. there is physically not enough room for a, a medical room for her to stay in. That's fucked right? up. So you get all the pictures and you have your final goodbyes with paws and stuff. And when you walk in there again... You walk into the other side of the wall, oh, and there's shit. nothing there, and oh, it's all shit. in your brain. Like you have this mad guilt uh, for having pause murder. Yeah, I was gonna say like because when she shows up the first time, I'm like, no way. Yeah, no, you had a vagina. You had a bomb in your vagina. Like, yeah, I'm like no way, no way. Um, but yeah, so I did that, and then I did the, uh, and then chapter two happens. Yeah, like hard cut chapter two, and I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of chapter one, like it goes to be continued. Yeah. Next time, and then it goes right into chapter it goes two. Goes to season two. Yeah. Of like, your TV show. And I was like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. And chapter two, actually, I found a lot more interesting. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Like a lot of the a lot of the main story points, I was like, yeah, this is a bit more interesting. With the uh, with the virus and stuff. And yeah, I'm like, this is cool because the reason. Okay, so the reason I wanted to play five, like the most interesting thing for me, is I wanted to see how Big Boss becomes the villain. Yeah. Like that's all I wanted to see from this game. Spoilers, you don't get to see that. Yeah, no, you don't. Because, <laughs> well, we'll get to that, yeah. why that's not a thing. Yeah, but, anyway, so they, they do some cool stuff with the virus. Uh, I like the whole thing of, like, it attracts to whatever language you're speaking. Yeah. That's... But it only really, it's like, you, there's different language strains. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it was cool. And, and, like... Oh, there's that one scene with Quiet, where she sticks the knife in that guy's mouth. Oh, yeah. And, like, her his teeth break off. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's so rough. So why was she doing that? Because he had... He was infected with the English strain. That's what, okay. That's And she like, knew. Yeah. Okay. Right? And so... But she can't talk it because you eventually learn that she also has... Yeah. That strain. strain. But, yeah, no. So I really like that, like, most... Like, what Chapter 2 was trying to do. Yeah. Fuck, I was at this point in the game when you saw the mission list, and it was like, total stealth, extreme. Yeah, side ops, side ops, side ops. And I was like, this is incomplete. Like, I was like, holy shit, this game is not finished. It's not. It's not finished. And I was just looking at it, because like, there's only a handful of actual missions that progress the story. Yeah, and to get those, you have to do a combination of those total stealth stuff yeah. and side ops. And I was like, and that's one of the things threw me for a loop. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know if I like this anymore. It's crazy because my cousin... Uh, he's like he's like a really big Metal Gear fan, at least when he was younger. Yeah. Uh, and he he like messaged me and he's like, Anthony, did you beat Metal Gear? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I don't know what to do after chapter two. Like, there's no more story missions. It's just hard mode versions. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you gotta. That's what I thought too. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, you gotta do those missions. And he's like, fuck this. Like, yeah. That's what I thought too. And I was like, well, I'll just do it. Whatever. Yeah. Um. And then I did it, and then you get some story missions, and I'm like, oh, cool, cool. Um, and then 43, mission 43 happens with the virus. That, I think that was the roughest mission. Oh, man, that was the best mission. It was real good, but it's, like, the roughest mission. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, oh, so this is where it becomes bad. I get it. This is what he's going to do. So, yeah, he goes through. you. So what happens is that there's a strain of the virus in your base. Yes. And they quarantine off that area. But you go walk through it and, like, you're trying to make sure everybody's okay, blah, 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 all this yeah. stuff. And it's like, no, everyone's fucked, bud. Yeah. Put on this mask, find the people who are infected, yeah. and shoot them in the face. So I, my favorite part is, like, they're like, boss, if anybody shows signs of infection, you have to kill them. Yeah. And, then, and I'm like, okay. And they're like, and immediately when you say, when you hear that, you're like, okay, so, like, only people who are infected kill. Yeah. But, like, there's nobody in there who is not infected. Everyone's infected. Yeah, and I was like, oh, and, that's awesome. And everyone is the, like, they're named people in your roster who uh, you have captured from I, before. I, the name thing didn't really get to me. I don't know. I thought that was really cool. I was like, uh, I think it's because they had a lot of goofy code names. Oh, okay. And I was just like, like Mongoose? Well, yeah, I was like, eh, whatever. Okay. But that final part at the end. Oh, they're like, choose for us, boss? Where they're like, boss, like, we know you have to kill us. And they're just saluting you while you shoot them in the <laughs> face. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what's going on, man? Yeah, and then Huey's all screaming at you. You're killing your own people. Blah, blah, blah. Which is, and I thought that was really cool. I'm like, oh, this is why he becomes evil. But then after that, he's like, no, we're going to appreciate them. Turn them into diamonds. No, yeah, put them bring them out on the battlefield with us. And then it turns out Huey was behind the whole thing, and I'm like... Huey, yeah, Huey, like, was giving information to Cypher. And... Yeah, and so I'm like, wait, so then... So they ship him out on a... They shot off his legs and ship yeah, him out on Yeah, and a then boat. I'm like, that takes away from the entirety of Mission 43, because I'm like, 
So, like, we weren't watching Big Boss turn into a villain. We were just watching some other dude become an asshole. Yeah, and then, well, Huey turned Big Boss into the villain. Because in later games, he is that mysterious person who is like, Check out all these rumors of Big Boss. He killed all of his own people. Yeah. Like, you ha- you now have the backstory behind that. Yeah. But Huey <clears throat> just tells his side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then after that, I believe it's the quiet mission. Yeah. That mission sucks. <sighs> so yeah. there, yeah, there is a mission with quiet where it's like kind of her last stand. Yeah. Pretty much. And that mission sucks because you can't stealth it. It's just tanks upon tanks upon tanks upon helicopters. And I didn't realize that until going in. So all I had with me was my Trank gear. Yep. Same. Holy fuck. I'm going to Trank this tank. No, you're not. I didn't know what to do. So I restarted it. And then um, you can't go back to the chopper once you start that mission. Yep. So I, I, I restarted the mission. And that leaves you somewhere in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And so from there on, I just spent so much money dropping in new... Uh, gear for me to wear. It's so dumb. I was like, this sucks. It's so dumb. It sucks. Like, there should be a warning. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Like, even if it breaks a little bit of the surprise, like, just, so it's like, hey man, you should probably, recommended, bring a rocket launcher. Like, yeah. But, I mean, the the, the events of, of Quiet and why she's quiet and, and stuff, they all, I, I was cool with it. I really liked her character. Yeah, I, I, by the end of the game, I was like, I really like you, Quiet. I mean, I know... Like, it, I still think it's pretty dumb that you're dressed like that. And you're you, you were made with, like, the male gaze in mind. Yeah, but I think as a character, I'm like, I liked you, Quiet. She's cool. She's, like, she's yeah. a really strong female character. Um, Although, I did give her the XOF uniform towards the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're like, ah, cover up, homie. Yeah, I give her that, and I'm like, I really like you, Quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah it's going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I... <laughs> That I still like last week I mentioned that I still think that's a really dumb caveat of like you have to be naked because of photosynthesis and you drink through your skin or whatever. And then but in like the end, he did the same thing. Yeah. And he was decked out in clothes forever. Okay, so the thing that really bugs me is that she says that, but then you meet the female skulls, the sniper unit. Yeah. And they're all dressed up. That too, right? And like, I'm like I don't know if she's like ex- like experimental more or yeah. like maybe they still eat normally or they don't really explain the skulls. Yeah, but they they sort of seem similar. Yeah. I mean, sure, sure, whatever, whatever. It, it's it's at this point nothing we could do about it. Mm-hmm. She was at small tangent. Did you stay in the chopper long enough till she posed like a cat? No. What? <laughs> you just wait. And she, she just goes, like she like paw at you like. You, it's something you have to see yourself. Oh man! But if you stay in the ACC for I think it's like five minutes. Holy okay. That's just, fun. just I don't know. Just chilling. Yeah, go brush your teeth or something while you're waiting. All right. She'll pose like a cat. Weird. But you have to have your bond at 100. Uh, it's already there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, I got her sniper wolf uniform. That's cool uniform. That's the best uniform. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the best one to have. Um, but you can't use her. What do you mean? So I got that sniper wolf uniform. Yeah. After she was gone. <gasps> oh. Right. And I'm like. All this fucking GMP I used. So when I played the game, there was no way of get. So after you beat that quiet mission, quiet last stand, she leaves yeah. for story reasons, yeah. and that's so fucking cool yeah. that they just take away that thing yeah. from you. It's really, I really enjoy it. But yeah. on the downside, I don't get refunded any <laughs> of that stuff I used. I know to like help her to like make her better. Yeah. Like I dumped everything into her, and then it's like I did the hard mode version of her sniper mission. And it's like, you got unlocked the like, sniper wolf uniform. I'm like, uh, good whoopty fucking who? I can't use her anymore. Oh, I did her hard mode mission before the quiet mission. Oh, okay. So I had her like that. Um, do you know how I beat that? No. So I marked her. Yeah. And then um, what I would do is I would peek out, but I would just mash the LT button. So I'm like, I, I look like I'm seizuring. I'm coming in and out and out. Yeah. And, out. and so she's always trying to shoot you, yeah. but she can never hit you. Oh. And then I called a, suppl- a support, or like a bombardment. Yeah. And so the chopper just takes her out. <laughs> <laughs> well, she just stays in one place while it just bombards her? Yeah. If as long as you keep peeking out. Oh, so- she gets stuck in aiming animation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so smart. And then, and then the thing just wipes her out. That's awesome. And because you can't kill her in that mission, you get the no kills reward. Oh, wow. 
right? Wait, so even like that part at the end where you have the chance to shoot her, can you shoot her? You can shoot her. Oh, and if you do that, <laughs> if you do that in the beginning of the game, you don't have quiet. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's what that has. That's pretty sick. Uh, but yeah, no. So after the quiet mission, immediately forty six unlocked for me. Yeah, like I had everything else. It was just forty six missing. Okay. So I went to that, and it said truth. Escape the hospital, and I'm yeah. like, again, and I'm like, again, and then I'm like, I, I guess this is, I don't know what this is. It's the exact same mission. Yeah, all the way through with a part at the end. Yep, and I don't know if I needed to play it again. No, nope, you didn't. No, especially the the opening acts where you're like crawling, and it's super slow. Yeah, you see that girl at the beginning, and you're like, oh hey, that's quiet. Like, there are some stuff that, like, change your perspective on what's going on in that scene. Yeah. Uh, because of the knowledge you now have. But yeah. it's not some. There should have been, like, a sped up version. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you didn't need to do the whole thing. I, it did remind me, though, that, like, that hospital se- sequence is probably one of my more favorite parts of the game. Mm. Um, oh, did you figure out who the man on fire was? Oh, so he's from, um, he's from Snake Eater. Yeah, it's Volgan. Yeah. They just resurrected Volgan instead of yeah. lightning. He's fire. Yeah. Yeah. They don't explain that either. No. <laughs> this game's so dumb. Wait. Because he's in your quarantine bay afterwards. Did yeah, you... you have to get his body. Yeah, you get his body. And then you see him. And then you can go to his quarantine bay. You're like, oh, that's there's Volgan. Yeah. And then Why is like, he here? They're like, yeah. That's just, a thing. You just have Volgan's corpse that's a chilling thing. on yeah. your quarantine bay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Mission 46 happens. I don't know if you need to run through it, but uh, Secret's out. Yeah. It turns it on its head. Um, you are not who you think you are. Yes. Uh, did you, did you see this coming? Um, yes and no. Okay. Uh, just, I, when I first played the game, I thought that Snake was hallucinating. You mean with like the mirror and the avatar creation and stuff? Yeah. Okay. I thought he was hallucinating and I thought that like Ishmael wasn't a real person. Okay. I thought that was actually Snake and he's watching someone else. Okay. Um, but then when they get to that sequence, um, what do you call it? So I, I kind of spoiled myself for this. Aw. I didn't mean to. Okay. Because I'm like, Venom Snake. I don't ever remember Venom Snake. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I went on the Metal Gear wiki, right? Yeah. And I typed in Venom Snake because I'm like, when do they refer to Big Boss as Venom Snake in Metal Gear? Mm-hmm. And the first line is like... Venom Snake is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, that's... This is the part where people kind of... Lost it. Lost it. Where So, you are not Snake. You are not Big Boss. Yes. You are some guy pretty much programmed to think you're Big Boss. To be fair, they say that he's like a very close lieutenant of... Yeah, he's like his number two. Yes. Or like you're like his number two. Yeah. And it gets really meta with like your the number two is actually you, the player, because you get to create your avatar and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Actually so did you put your name and stuff in there? Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's like I was like, it whoa, when you like when you find the dog tags and it says my name and I'm yeah. like, Oh shit. Like yeah. I'm big boss. That's weird. Yeah. Uh but yeah, this is this is like this is a part where people were like, This is total bullshit yeah. and this is like storytelling genius. Yeah. And I am on the fence of this is total bullshit because they did that before in two where you find those dog tags with your name on it and your birth date when you enter, enter them at the beginning of the game and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> also just the fact that this isn't Metal Gear Solid 5. It's Metal Gear Solid V? It's Metal Gear Solid V. <laughs> right? And Kojima has explicitly come out in previous interviews saying that a main sequel Metal Gear Solid game will never have anything but a number after it. Oh. And because it's not an explicit 5, like the number 5. It's a V. It's yeah. a V. Yeah. It's like, this is, in his mind, this is like, here's this story bridge. Yeah. Right? But it's only telling you maybe half the story. Yeah. Like, and now everyone's thinking that Metal Gear Solid Act, like, five, number five, would actually be, like, Big Boss's side of what happened. Yeah. Right? But now we'll never know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so on that twist, I kind of love it, and I kind of 
don't like it at all. All right. Because I think I think in the context of being a video game fan mm. and just like what big boss is in, in the grand scheme of things like mm. he's like i love the idea that you know we we talk about like who are iconic video game characters and we uh-huh. look back and we're like oh big boss or boss all snake yeah like they have like this this sort of this they use it they use the word in the in the game i think like, mm-hmm. they have they have this legend built up about, upon them yeah and i think it's super cool like thematically that like that the legend that was built upon was actually the player yeah like you are involved in that but I think, in the terms of Metal Gear, that completely takes away from everything that made Big Boss cool. Exactly. Um, so, I'm torn on it. Um, the one, but I think the problem for me that th- is when I start to really think about this character mm, and Venom Snake. Uh, yeah, Venom Snake, and that is so he was just some dude. He was his second in command with not skills not on par with the boss. But, like, I guess real good. And then Otacon, or not Otacon, uh, Ocelot and, and Kaz, Kaz were, like, they are on different sides of, like, what was it? Ocelot didn't like Big Boss's plan for this double. Yeah. But he went along with him anyways because he was loyal to the boss. Yeah. But then, like, after the boss disappears, and then Kaz was like, no, I'm with the boss all the way 100%. I'm yeah. going to make this guy into thinking he's the boss because yeah. it makes the real boss's plan come true. Yeah. And then that shows the schism between the two, like the Master Miller. and Yeah. And I think, I don't know, like, like just the more I think about this whole scenario, it's like, so you could just take any dude through the magic of this hypnosis trick. You can implant memories into this dude and you can just make him like pretty much as awesome as the boss. I don't know if it's that extreme. Like, I never got that from it, where it's just like, I could go pick up Joe Blow off the street. Because the person they pick, when they... When they say you're, like, almost like a second-in-command to the boss, yeah. that kind of implies that you have... Or this character has okay. some sort of... Well, the thing is, he's a mad medic. Skill. He's a medic. Okay. He's a paramedic. Like, that's, they, they completely say that. Like, that's who he is. He yeah. was the guy who was trying to pull the bomb out of the vagina. Yeah. Like, and, um... And that was you. Yeah. And, uh... So, okay, maybe he has some skill... But obviously it worked. Mm-hmm. Obviously it was amazing. And uh, if this was so successful, why the fuck did they have the Les Enfants Terrible thing? Oh, that does really... I didn't think about it that way. Right? That like, really does undermine Les Enfants Terrible. Doesn't it? Right? Because this was clearly the... Like, this is it. Yeah, like, you've done it. Like, you don't have to make triplets that yeah. eat other babies in the womb so they get stronger and grow faster. There you go. And, th- and that was the only thing that was in my head. It was like... You just ruined, like, I, the allure of Solid Snake. Because, yeah, you think it's his... Well, the whole thing is, like, uh, was it in 4, where it focuses on their genes? Yeah. Like, it really emphasizes that, hey, these brothers, like, the reason they're as cool as they are... Is because they is, are... Is because Big Boss, and they're genetically descended from Big Boss. Yeah. But if I can make this other super soldier who's capable of making his own, like, unhin- unhinged, like, army... Yeah. Out somewhere in the ocean, like, yeah, then Les Enfants Terribles isn't really needed. Yeah. And so, like, that, that that was my big problem. I mean, like, again, I think thematically it's super cool that you are Venom Snake and that you helped make the legend, but yeah. fuck, like, it, everything about it just really, I mean, hmm, if I, if I were still into Metal Gear as much as I used to be, okay. I think I would be super crushed. Like, I would be super, like, annoyed. Uh, but I'm not anymore, so okay, it's cool. Uh, other things that really kind of just the technology in this game—it's weird. It's uh, it's like retro future tech, and to me, it just doesn't line up. So okay, I think we talked about it after the podcast where your your walkie talkie uh-huh. is hollow map, uh-huh. but also like a trigger to light your e cigarette. Uh huh. That's weird. Uh huh. Uh, what else? Like, Sahelanthropus. How is Sahelanthropus so much cooler than Rex? He is so much more useful than Rex. Exactly. Like, He's so, bipedal. Yeah. Uh, he just has a sword. He has a beam whip. Yeah. Is what he has. It's sick. Because then, after this, it's supposed to be, uh, basically, Diamond Dogs becomes Outer Haven. Right? Yeah. Um... And it goes into Metal Gear. Yeah, the... the not Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, the NES cart. 
And that's where Solid Snake kills Venom Snake. Exactly. But uh, have you seen Metal Gear? Like Metal Gear? The Metal Gear? The original Metal Gear? Like the robot or the, the game? The robot. No. It is some piece of shit robot. <laughs> so when I think about... So how do they go from Salahantropus? Then downgrade all the way. To, <laughs> to yeah. this little Metal Gear. And like even in 3, uh, like because it was set in the 60s, right? Yeah. That still had like, oh, like Rex is cool because it's bipedal. This yeah. thing is just like a giant fucking tank that shag odd, right? Yeah. That's a Metal Gear. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense because it's in the past. Yeah. But this thing is like so far and beyond. Like it's, I wouldn't, maybe it's like on par or if not better than Ray. Yeah, I think, yeah. Ray just looks smoother, that's all. Yeah, and he's and he's amphibious. Yeah. I mean, Sal Hanch, like, honestly, for the first 30 missions or chapter one of the file, I was like, this is just the story of Gundam. Someone made a Gundam. <laughs> Someone made a Gundam, and nobody knows how to handle the Gundam. <laughs> yeah. and how did you like the mission where you had to save Huey, and then you had to stealth from Sahelanthropus? Oh, that mission. I didn't really like it. Oh, I really like that mission. Where you have to carry him? Yeah, you have to carry him, but, like, you're, you're like, hiding from this, basically, Godzilla. Yeah. And you're like trying to stealth. Like it's just an, like an ant versus a skyscraper. Like I had tons of smoke grenades. Oh, okay. And so it was, it was easy to go. All right. But then he launches those drones. Yeah, those drones suck. And I didn't take him down. You didn't? No. Oh, wow. They, they had lasers pointed at me, and I'm like, am I supposed to do something here? I think they're, they're motion detecting lasers. Oh. So if you're just super still and they go over you, they won't. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the chopper came down. And then you got out of there? But Salahandropus was right beside me. Oh, that happens either way. Yeah, okay. Uh, because there's that whole point at the end where it's like you're you're on the machine gun, right? And you have he, to shoot he jumps him. at you. you yeah. Shoot him. Yep. Yeah. So, just on the side, he he falls down either way. Anyway, because what happened was when he before he was jumping at me, I was just mowing at him with the the gun. Yeah. And my my gun overheat. Over, yeah. And <clears throat> when it did the slow motion jump, it was just overheated. Oh, so right? nothing happened. And so nothing, and I couldn't shoot him, but then he got really close and went, boom! I'm like, I didn't shoot you. Like, <laughs> I didn't do shit. You broke the illusion. Yeah, you broke the illusion. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to cover? Um, Big Boss's machine thing from Peace Walker. Did you get that? Big Boss's machine thing from Peace Walker. Or The Bosses, sorry. What thing? Where, from, from Peace Walker, there's that AI that they oh, have yeah, the yeah, boss yeah, 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 Did yeah. you get that? Yeah. That thing's pretty cool. Yeah. If you go to the place with it. It's uh, just talking. It talks to you. And if you shoot it, it screams in pain and stuff. It's always saying like, Jack. Is Jack, that you, Jack? Jack, you, Jack? Yeah. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. Uh, Eli, or Ocelot, I mean Liquid. Has the best jacket in that whole game. Never be game over. So when he first showed up, I didn't make the connection immediately. Okay. I was like, because in my mind, I'm like, this is right, Ra- Raiden, right? You're some punk ass kid. I thought it was Raiden because I remember the only thing I remember about Raiden is that he was a child soldier. Yeah. And I'm like, is this Raiden? And then and then they gave him the sword. I'm like, is this Raiden? And then and it uh, wasn't. And then it wasn't. I'm like, oh. But then I thought that would have been a bit too convenient if it yeah. was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh. Well, Ryan's whole thing is that he was Jack the Ripper. Yes, as that's a kid, what it was. he was just a fucking mass murderer. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. and he wasn't in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. Somewhere, he was in Africa. Was he in Africa or was he somewhere else? I, th- I thought he was like in uh, a European, like he was on like East Europe. Oh, maybe. But yeah, know. he was Jack the Ripper. He was like he just murdered people. Yeah, yeah, good for him. And uh, yeah, so Metal Gear. I'm still blown away that you picked this as your game of the year. That game. I love the way it plays. And for me, like, even though this is the weakest Metal Gear story-wise, yeah. that gameplay is... It's the most fun I had playing a game that year. I think... I think it, what it is and it isn't. I think, like... I think this game is... Yeah, like, mechanically, it's awesome. Yeah. But, um... It was clearly the Metal Gear game made after the popularity of grand theft auto okay in that it's open world and it's more about you having total control of how you want to do your stuff go about your your days yeah and i think that kind of just uh made it feel a lot more boring to me it got i got tired of it a lot quicker because unless you were constantly creating your own fun 
like there was n- they never gave you incentive to use different items or to go outside your comfort zone other than just do it yeah and like i said towards the end of the game because it got it went on for so long and the, and the mission variety isn't very varied yep like it's always kill this man or extract this person and or here's the convoy blow up the tank blow up the tank yeah so those are the three missions and like i always had like a a, 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 a defined way i was going to do it how so what was your defined way mine was always the trank Solution extract. Okay. Like Fulton. But halfway through it was... I've developed my guns to the point where I'm okay with where they are right now. I'll just kill them all. Oh, okay. So my thing was, at the beginning, is Trank. Do yeah. whatever. Try stealth it. But later in the game, you get that shock arm. Yeah. If you upgrade that to level 3, the yeah. very max, and you charge it all the way to level 3... Yeah. Uh, you summon a thunderstorm. Whoa. So you charge the thing all the way, and you go, lightning! And you just shove your hand in the air. Wow. And you release all your energy. And every single guard within, like, a 20-meter radius, like, no, 50, 50 50-meter radius, just gets stunned. Oh. And then you go, hey, D-Dog, extract everyone. Arf! And then he just goes and black holes everybody out. That was the thing I was talking about, the wormhole last week. I never got the wormhole. What? Yeah. How? The the side op never appeared for me. Oh, that sucks. I was looking for it because I'm like, how do you get the wormhole? This game's almost over. And it's like, finish side op 50. And mine just goes 49, 51. Oh, weird. So I was like, well, okay. no wormhole for me. Wormhole's pretty sick. Uh, I will say I love the hand of Jehuti. That's a, that's a really cool <laughs> weapon. I used it in uh, in one of the online. Like I was doing, I was yeah. taking over someone's FOB. Yeah. And this guy was camping and I handed Jehuti him to me. <laughs> yeah. And then I threw him off a bridge. I was like, yes, yeah, sick. <laughs> yeah. There's also, was there a hand of Anubis? I don't think so. No, no, no. There was a side op where you have to hunt down these rare animals. Oh, and one is something of Jehuti and the other one's something Anubis. Yes. I think that's how you get the parts to make the final uh, upgrade for the hand of Jehuti. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so that was my problem. Like, the game just felt like it got very repetitive fast. So, yeah, it it did. Yeah. And I totally agree with you that the variety isn't that much. Yeah. But I guess I enjoyed yeah. that open world a lot yeah. more than you did. Yeah. Because uh, I, that game, I had no problem replaying those missions yeah. or going through hard modes or doing side ops yeah. or just, just, like, farming. Eventually, I found, like, a farming route. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. I think, like, if it was half the length, I would have been fine with it. Because, like, I could play through Metal Gear Solid 4, like, two or three times before I finish this game. Yeah. It's really uh, like, it's a really, like, it's unnecessarily long. And they that's do, crazy when you consider it's incomplete. They do the JRPG thing. Yeah. Of, here's the all these things to extend your time. Yeah. Um, uh, what was the, what was the last thing I wanted to mention? I uh, Before we get into the Phantom episode? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's something else I want to talk about, but uh, it's not coming to me. Oh, well, it'll come to me. Okay. The Phantom episode. Which is not part of the game because it's on the DVD. Yeah. Like, I'm of the mind of, like, whatever the game has, like, that's what you have to judge it on. But it's kind of hard not to see that. Like, in in the court of law, it wouldn't be admissible <laughs> evidence. Like, yeah. like, hey, man, this game could have been pretty, <laughs> like, even more sick. Like, uh, Yeah, the th- like, the whole idea of, like, having a third place... That was an island that would look different from Afghanistan and Africa. It was just all jungle. It was like Metal Gear Solid 3 style. Had, that sounds awesome. It had traps. And some of the kids were decked out in like jungle yeah. stuff. Yeah. They had leaves on their head like and it was, stuff. It was like he made, like Eli made his own Lord of the Flies moment. Yeah. Like, he had the conch and everything. I'm like, this could have been something cool. Why'd you have to make the first <laughs> two things so damn long? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you think this, if this story was in the game... How would you or how would you think they would affect it? Because it's a twenty minute video, yeah, and that doesn't that just necessarily shows you here's all the key story beats, yeah, right. It doesn't really put you into the mindset of like what they were gonna do with this island, yeah. or if it was gonna be anything more significant than just here's twenty more minutes of story, yeah. yeah. Like, do you think it would have? I don't think I don't know. Like, it would change your opinion. I guess it would have definitely made the game. I would have thought of the game more highly. But I don't think it would have changed much because um, previous Metal Gears have always been centered around a main problem that you have to solve. Yeah. 
Metal Gear V is not like that. Like it's just. I like, kind of, I like that Metal Gear V. Good job. <laughs> yeah, it's job. it's more just like this is our day to day here at Diamond Dogs. <laughs> here at the mother base, this is what we're doing today. Someone keeps putting up kawaii ass anime <laughs> girls all over the base, and I got to tear down those posters. Yeah, yeah, and I uh, yeah I put one of those stickers on my boxes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, and I think that's my like. Okay, I remember now. That's my biggest problem with this game. There's no memorable moments from this game. At least for me. Like, there's nothing... There's nothing... Like, so, after we watched the Phantom episode, yeah. I was like, oh, man, remember these moments in 4? Exactly! Like, 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 Raiden stopped the boat, and, like, yeah. there's Mount Rushmore and all this I can shit. remember. Like, I can remember awesome moments from Solid 1, 2, 3, and 4. Like, like incredible moments that Metal Gear's known for. Like, something that always comes to my mind, that always blows my, like, me away. I can't is, like, believe it. Or, like, the Arsenal gear. Reveal. Yeah, or, or, or when you're captured as Solid Snake in 1, and you have to yeah. use the ketchup as blood. Yeah. Like, like... The bot... The... Boss moment in three where it's like yeah. you have to pull that trigger. This game doesn't have any of that. For me, like there is no individual moment, but for me, it's just overall I felt the game was that, and that kind of takes away from yeah. like it's not what it's again. It comes back to this is the best Metal Gear to play. This is the worst Metal Gear. Yeah, like uh, and I don't know. I guess because I liked how the other Metal Gears are more three D Metroidvania ish. Mm. Like, hey, I'm in Shadow Moses. I gotta unlock this door, and I can go down here. I look at all this stuff. I got the key card. Yeah, like yeah. I like I really like that type of gameplay, and um, yeah, so definitely fun to play this one. Mm. Just uh, it's not Metal Gear. Yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's uh, it's a it's a it's a mixed bag. I still can't believe you picked this as your game of the year. I really enjoy this game, and at the moment. All that shit was like, what? This is all crazy. Like, when you just lose quiet, I thought that was amazing. Like, no game no, no game has the balls to just take something like that away from you. Sure like, they do. Like, what? A lot of JRPGs do that. Like, what? Aerith dies. Aerith is garbage. She's she's trash city. She's the only healer you have. But that was also how many years ago? Yeah. Like, there, I can't think of any modern examples that do that stuff. A lot of modern JRPGs do it. A lot of the Tales games do it. Oh, I don't play those. Okay. okay. Like, they'll take, like, your best character and be like, peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, like, I have, I've, the only Tales game I've ever played is Zillia. Yeah. And I didn't like that. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Like, one of the best Tales games, Symphonia. Like, he's, like, your awesome dude, and it turns out he's the villain. Oh, sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just turns on you and says, sorry. Like, I think the last example I could think of is, like, or kind of modern example would be Persona 3 where you get Shinjiro and Shinjiro's pretty boss as a party member and then they just kill him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, it happens. Um, yeah. And there's still, like, a lot of, like, Easter eggs in the game, but... It's oh, a- yeah. I think the most enjoyable thing about this game are the small Easter egg moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. Would this have made, if you had like a theoretical top 10 game list, would this be on your list? Yeah, I just don't think it would be like, you know what? If you said this was number two, I'd be like, I am right there with you. Okay. But I'd be like, it can't be number one because of all these. Because you picked The Witcher 3. Yeah. Because I'm like, it can't be number one because of all these issues. Okay. That, that's just, just how I would think about it. I'm like, there's just no way. It doesn't matter how good a game is if it has like such glaring problems. Hmm. Um, so are you coming at your theoretical list from these are technically the best games? Or these are the games I most enjoyed. The games I most enjoyed. Okay. Right. Yeah. But still, you're saying with those technical problems, it wouldn't be. Maybe one. not technical, but just. Um, I guess it would be technical, like like an incomplete narrative. I wish yeah. like the game had a bit more variance to it. Yeah. Story progression is kind of weird in chapter two. Yeah, it's it's the pacing is all over the place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Like, yeah, like coming yeah. from that, coming back to that game in hindsight, like yeah. having this discussion, like yeah. there are some issues, and like I totally yeah. see that there are issues, but those issues aren't big enough or a big enough bother for me. Yeah, to not give it number one, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, oh yeah, I don't know. That's that just surprised me because you're currently the bigger Metal Gear fan, and I just thought those would bug you more. Yeah, I thought it would too, but yeah. I kind of welcome the change, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Like I said, like if I if high school me played this, I think I would have hated it a lot more. You would have got on those message awards yeah. and be like, "Oh if, my if was, god!" If it was still if it was still like high school me being like, "Snake Eater is the best game in the world," <laughs> then it'd be like, I think I would have been pretty upset about this. Okay, 
But uh, all right, it's it's at this point I accepted that Metal Gear is not the end all and be all of everything. Are you sure? I'm fucking. Positive. I don't know. Man. This game has proved it. <laughs> this game has proved it. But Metal Gear Solid Three though, Snake Eater is pretty good. When you got that ladder sequence. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the comes on? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a chapter break. It's an in-game chapter break. That is pretty good. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I really enjoy this game. Yeah. Like, I I feel obviously more than you do. Yeah. But, I'm, man, oh, I like that game a lot. Did you notice, Uh, so at the end, when Snake is looking into the mirror and whatever, and he starts the tape? Yes. Did you Do you know what that tape is? No. So, it, uh, the tape... The title is the mission that he goes on in Metal Gear. Oh, really? For, on the MSX. Oh. And he starts up an MSX tape. Oh. Right? So it's like what you would use on the MSX to play that game. Yeah. He starts it in the Walkman. I I almost am tempted to break out my NES to play Metal Gear. It's cool. Just to see. But. It's hard. It's fucking hard. I know. I, I remember I got to like the second screen as a kid and just like, Died. fuck this. Yeah. It's hard. I it's could a never, hard game. I could never do it. So. You can always let's play it. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Watch a let's play. How long is that game? I, I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. I never, I've never beat that game. Because that changes things now that I know who big boss is in Metal Gear. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it turns out he just dies to Salt Nick. And it's like, oh no, I'm secretly uh, someone else, sucker. Yeah. Well, you can, if you still have uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence. Yeah. Uh, you can totally play those first two games. Oh, really? Yeah, because they have the emulated versions of those two games. Oh, there. but I have the cart. Yeah, you, you did, but you don't have to hook up a system. Yes, I do. Oh, is your PS2 not hooked up? No. Oh, mine is. Okay. <laughs> Both my PS2s are. <laughs> yeah, you're a loser. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're a loser. You have two PS2s hooked up? Yeah, I have one on my regular TV, oh. and then I, bu- I brought out my CRT... For the Japanese PS2. What's I wrong with you? So I have two TVs. What's wrong with you? With two PS2s, because one's region, they're all region locked. Ugh, gross. But, uh, yeah, any final thoughts on Metal Gear, the fifth? Coming back to that game, that game has issues. Metal Gear Vince. They, <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. They are not issues that I think uh, destroys that game for me. Yeah, I don't think it destroys the game, but I, I, I just think it doesn't... It's not number one quality for you. Yes. Okay. There's enough to keep it off the top step. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's a solid, you take the silver medal. <laughs> you know? Okay. Like, I give it that. Um, I do, I would have liked to have seen what this game was like if it were complete. And I think there could have been a realistic chance if he didn't make it so goddamn long. If Kojima had yeah. 80 more million dollars. No, if he was just like, years. chapter one is only 15 missions, not 30. Okay. Chapter two is 10 missions. Chapter 3 is 5 missions. Done. Yeah, because there's a lot of mandatory missions that seem like story missions, but they're not story missions. No! Yeah. It is the whole, yo, this yeah, week on uh, We're yeah, Cypher. We got this open world. On the Cypher report. Like the convoy mission, where it's like, destroy all the things. Yeah, it's like, oh, we got recruited to take out these tanks. Take them out. Take out all, all the tanks. This tank's coming at 9, this tank's coming at 10, this tank's coming at 11, but they're all coming at different areas. Yeah. Go. That's a gunship. Don't take it head on. <laughs> Yeah, that game's weird. Yeah, it is weird. But there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed our Metal Gear spoiler cast. Metal Gear Solid V. Now you know and uh, how we all feel about the Metal Gear. Yeah. Um, That's a sick side story. <laughs> it's a sick fantasy. It's a sick in-canon side story. It's, a, it's an interesting fantasy. Fuck, man, though. That I, wa- I want to know why Bosk becomes evil. My big boss becomes evil. That's what that what Metal Gear Solid Five was gonna be. Now you gotta wait for the Metal Gear Solid Five Pachinko Machine, and then you can go play that. Fuck man, <laughs> that could be something good. The Patchy Slot Machine, man. Yeah, I can't wait. I've been, I've been playing a lot of Patchy Slot and oh, Yakuza sh- Five. No, I don't know how Patchy Slot works. Are you like, winning? I'm always winning. I'm never not winning. Okay, but I don't know how I'm winning. Okay. Because, like, what happens is, like, I'm playing the Virtual Fighter Machine. So, like, the balls go into a certain area, and then it's like, bonus! And then I pick Akira, 
and then Akira is waiting in a stage. And sometimes it's like, a new challenger approaches, and then no one's there. And oh. then it goes back to Akira. And then sometimes it's like, a new challenger approaches, and it's Dural. Yeah. And then Dural, like, beats me. But then yeah. I face Dural again, and then I beat them. And it's like, it's weird. Yeah. I don't <sighs> understand Kaiju Slot. Me either. Okay, one more thing on Metal Gear. Okay, go. Did you miss the uh, Calm Link? Like the two, yeah, yeah. I I was waiting for just one time. It never like, happened. I was waiting for the screen, like you know, it says like emergency call in red, yeah, or or white. Da, da, da. I was waiting for that the whole game. It never happens, and it never happens. It's not a real Metal Gear game. <laughs> oh yeah, I told you it's a six side story. Oh my god, it's not a real Metal Gear. It's a Gear. six side story. Fuck. Even four had them. Terrible. Shit. I was looking forward to reading like all of it, or listening and reading. Yeah. Shit. Or having Snake's inner thoughts when you press, like, L2 or yeah. L3 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but no, this one you can call anytime. Did it. Whatever you're looking at. It's yeah. all contextual. Oh, man. That's a Kenyan mangrove crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game. This game. It's weird. Okay. That's it. That's it this week. Fuck. Next we go, week. Did we go long? Huh? Did we go long? We, uh, we're, like, an hour and 25. Okay. That's not bad. I think about 40 to 50 minutes of that is Metal Gear. Damn. Yeah. We went okay. quite a bit on Metal Gear. As it should. It's a, it's a big game. Yo, you want to hear about the super baby method? No. All right. No, let's not. Okay. Let's not hear about Big sure. Mama. Uh, I think next week we're going to have Deadpool. We are. We're going to see Deadpool. I'm hearing a lot of great things. Yeah, I just heard it's amazing. I heard it's cute. What? Yeah, I heard it's like super cute. I heard it's the opposite. I heard it's super cute. Okay. Like cuddly for adults. No, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> I don't think that's it at all. I think you're lying to me. No, no, I heard it's like the cutest superhero story for adults. Okay. I also heard Colossus awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna review <laughs> Deadpool. It's cute. Look forward and to it. And something, I don't know. Uh sure. Sure. I'm going to tell you about Fire Emblem. <gasps> oh, snap. Oh, yeah. Fire Emblem's out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Which one are you getting? I Both? I will I, I, I will wind up with a special edition. Somehow. 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 Right. If I need to overpay for it, I need to overpay for it. But I will end up with a special edition. How much would you overpay for it? I don't know. What percentage of overpay? I'm not going to reveal all that information <laughs> publicly. I don't want people, like, throwing me offers. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay, then. See you guys next week. Bye.